feeling pretty good right now. Uh, it's been about six months since I've been able to really get my thoughts on a good piece of Narnie movie news. Uh, what we have here is Douglas Gresham kind of outlining his uh, plans or really just his hopes uh, for the future of the series. Uh, the biggest piece of news of all is that he wants to make the silver chair next. And prior to this, I think that wasn't even really much of a discussion anymore. We had just taken taken it for granted that, yeah, if they're going to make another Narnie movie, it's going to be The Magician's Nephew, like it or not. After all that drama that started really around Don Treader's release of, wait a minute, they might not make The Silver Chair next? They might do The Magician's Nephew? What? After all that back-and-forth drama, blah, blah, I guess all that for nothing. They want to make The Silver Chair next anyway. Okay. Uh, he also wants to make the film independently in order to maintain control over the script. Uh, he confirms that the moratorium period... Um, is seven years, assuming that began just after Don Charter's release. Uh, presumably that would mean that the earliest we could see another Narnie film was 2018. He would like to get Andrew Adamson to return and direct, but he thinks he'd probably be too expensive. Uh, whew, so this is just sort of taking a lot of uh, things we'd taken for granted about what Narnia 4 would be, and it kind of turns it on its head. In October, he said that he would like to start another Narnia film in three or four years. Now, putting all this together... Maybe what that means is that he hopes to start working on it in three or four years' time and have it ready just when the moratorium period ends. So if it ends in 2018 and they really do start in you know three or four years' time, you know that gives them you know it's pre-production, production, post-production, all that stuff. Maybe he would plan it out so they would finish just for in time for the moratorium period to end. Uh, maybe that's how it works. I don't know. So first off, how do I feel about the silver chair? After all the back and forth, they're gonna make the silver chair anyway. Um, if they make another one, um. I think that uh, the reason – I suspect the reason Gresham wants the silver chair – now, it could just, just be a simple matter of he's an Arnie fan, and like most of us, he'd rather just make the silver chair next. It's the logical sequel to Don Treader. You keep, you want to keep on following the original published order, I guess, if you're an Arnie fan, and uh, maybe that's just the next story he wants to tell. Um, that could be it. Um, I think another big factor, though, is that you know a lot of us have said for a while that if you are – if you're going to take one Narnia book – and, a, and make it into a movie with a relatively low budget. If you had to pick one Arnie book, you'd probably pick The Silver Chair. I think that would be the easiest one to turn into, uh, or that'd be the easiest one to make into a film and, you know, pretty much do it justice um, on a fairly low budget. You know, there aren't any huge battle scenes. Um, there's nothing, I mean, it's just really the world's end at the beginning and at the end, and uh, the, the, the visualization of that and Aslan. Those two things are challenging. Uh, everything else, you know, you could see where they could get away with it. They could make it a pretty studio-based film and, you know, get away with kind of old-fashioned tricks and they could make it, um, they could still pretty much do the story justice. Now, I think a, a lot of fans I'm seeing are having a really negative reaction to this, the idea of I mean, making Silver Chair on a lower budget. Because if he's going to make it independently, which we'll talk about in a second, um, it's obviously almost certainly going to be on, on a kind of a tight budget. This could be really bad, um, but I think it could also be really good. Um, I've actually thought for a while on, on those days when I when I've thought about you know what would I do if I made an Arnie film. I've often thought, I wonder if I would almost want to make it on a lower budget. I don't know what it is. I'm reading the books, and there's something about it that says I would almost prefer to make it with old school, cheap you know, not not cheap, but just quick and easy old Hollywood tricks that were around long before CGI was around. There's something about that idea that I think would complement Narnia well. Now, I, know, I understand fans' concerns that we don't want BBC all over again. You know, I'm not saying Mr. Bieber has to be a man in a costume and all that. But there's something about that simplicity, that way of doing it, that just seems like it would complement the flavor of what Narnia should be a little better. One of my favorite sayings is, cleverness is worth more than gold, because then you don't have to use as much gold. If you're really clever about something, sometimes it's actually better. The result is actually better than if you had had a lot of money or a lot of time. You know, watch a director's commentary. It's amazing how often this happens, that uh, a director wants to do something, but he doesn't have enough time or money, so he has to do something else. That so They have to think, well, we can't do that, so what, what else can we do? They have to come up with a solution. And the solution for that problem is actually more desirable than what they wanted to do initially. I guess that makes sense. Like, you think, oh, what can we do in this movie? And you kind of think of the most obvious thing, right? Oh, the most obvious thing's too expensive. We have to do something else. So that forces you to be creative and come up with something that maybe is a little more original, a little more interesting than what you thought of originally. So it's amazing how often that happens. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen here, but it, it opens that possibility. I'm just saying a low budget may not be the kiss of death. Maybe it'll be a blessing. I'm sure there will be things that, you know, if they make it on a low budget, that I'm like, man, I wish they'd had more money for this scene, and there's going to be compromises that they don't like and we don't like, but I just wonder if overall maybe it could actually be more of a blessing than a curse. It's a possibility. 
um, as we were making it independently, um, there was something about I mean, my eyebrows kind of went up like independently. I never really, I never really seriously considered, you know, them making independent Narnia films. Um, that's just the whole, I guess, the whole Hollywood franchise kind of way of thinking is just so ingrained into my my mind at this point. Um, I actually, when I initially read that and read that Gresham was doing it because he wanted to maintain, have full say over the scripts, wanted to control the scripts, there was something about that that hit me the wrong way. I just think Gresham's got to be careful. Uh, Historically, whenever you have a studio or a producer or someone else just breathing down a director's neck saying, hey, here's what you can and cannot do, the results are very rarely satisfying. Just think about how, how creatively asphyxiating that is. You're all excited. You've got this story you want to tell. You've got this movie you want to make, but you keep running into these roadblocks. Producer telling you, nope, you can't do that. No, 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 nope, you can't do that because A, B, and C. I think Gresham just has to hire the director and let him do his thing. If if you you know ask a director, hey, what kind of movie do you want to make? If you like what he says, tell him, okay, I like that. I want to see that movie. Go make that movie for me, and just let him do it. Probably be a good thing, um, but just encourage Gresham to be careful there to not be too controlling. Uh, I was talking to um, a friend uh, last night about. You know, is it good that they're apparently going ahead and continue this series rather than just start over? I personally, I just think of a reboot and I just feel so drained when I think of a reboot. Like starting from scratch, scrap the whole thing. Just forget it. If 20 years, if, if another director comes along and says, hey, I have a cool idea for how to, a new take on Narnia, sure, then do it. But at this point, it's like, just let it die. At this point, it, it already feels like the series is kind of out of gas. Trying to reboot the whole thing, I just don't feel like. The energy is there for that. If they make Silverchair now, they're going to have to recast Will Poulter. Uh, I, I'm kind of surprised there's actually some discussion about that because I just take that for granted. Yeah, they got to. Re- they're going to have to recast Will Poulter, um, and especially if they make it independently on a low budget, probably have to recast Liam Neeson as well. Probably have to recast Ben Barnes. It's almost a reboot anyway. I mean, they can tell you no, it's a sequel to Dawn Treader. Um, yeah, it's where they, they can tell you it's a part of this same film series, but it might as well be a reboot. Uh, just because of how, how to the degree to which they'll have to start over in terms of continuity, um, they might as well be a reboot that is starting with the silver chair. What my friend's concern was is that you know uh, there uh, you can't undo what's been done in the other in the other three films. Um, at this point, the series is just off course. You can't fix it. Um, the the series is fundamentally not going to work right if you just continue it. Like, it. It's nothing to salvage here. I get what he's saying. Um, the Chronicles of Narnia books are seven great books that work very well by themselves. Uh, they just work better if you read them in a certain order. It's not like Harry Potter and certainly not like Lord of the Rings where it's really one story, you know, d- divided up into um, different episodes. I think you can pick up The Silver Chair or um, Don Treader or, or Horse and His Boy or a lot, really, really, really any of the Narnia books ex- except The Last Battle. I think you can just pick it up and it can be your first book and you can still enjoy it. You can't fully appreciate it. You're not going to have... It's not going to have the same impact on you. That's one of the things I'll talk about in my um, my videos I'm working on right now about the the chronological order versus publication order. It's not going to have the same impact on you, but you can still really enjoy it, have a great experience with it. They still work well as individual stories, but they also have a relationship, and you can you can really see the way Lewis is weaving uh, a lot of different themes throughout the series. You know, they do work together, and he's saying it, you can't fix that. It's gone. You know, with what they've done, I agree, um, and that's unfortunate. But at the end of the day. If they just want to make a good Silver Chair movie, I'm not going to complain. If in 2018 I go to see The Silver Chair and I think, oh, that was a good movie and a good adaptation of The Silver Chair, I'm going to be happy. Oh, I'm glad to have seen a good Silver Chair movie. It's unfortunate the whole series won't fit together as, as nearly as well as it does in the books, but just at this point, I'm very happy to just have a good Silver Chair movie, have a good Horse and His Boy movie, then have a good Magician's Nephew, then have a good Last Battle. I'm fine with that. It won't be perfect, but I think there's still something worthwhile about that. That's really that's really where I am. Just make four good, just make four good movies. Either way, I just feel like Gresham is forcing it. Um, this is uh, really one of the most, maybe the most fundamental problem with the series. Um, this is the thing that, even though I thought um, Wardrobe and Caspian were pretty good films, they weren't great films. And the thing that really weighs them down and prevented them from being great films is that it wasn't sort of an organic process, the decision to make the movies. No one, well, why was Lord of the Rings made? Because Peter Jackson read the book, he got an idea for how you can make it into a movie. It just, it just, he got inspired, and so he made it as a as a response to being inspired. That's not what happened with Narnia. Um, what happened with Narnia is Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter came out, 
and some studio executives realized, hey, this is a what we got to make fantasy films. The market wants fantasy. There's an opportunity here. You know, it's, there's money to be made. Oh, how about Narnia? You can make that. So I think the decision to make Nar- uh, Narnia films was made before anybody had an, a great idea for how you could actually do it. That's what Gresham sounds like. I really think that's what he's doing with Screw Tape too. By the way, uh, apparently, in the meantime, he's going to be working on a film adaptation of the Screw Tape letters, and I think that's really forcing it. Uh, a lot of different ideas have been proposed to him about how you can make how you can make a movie that has the title of the Screw Tape letters and is sort of like the Screw Tape letters. And to me, it's just like. Maybe the Screw Tape Letters doesn't want to be a movie. I think it definitely doesn't. Um, it just seems you would have to change. I'm getting off topic here, but you have to you would have to invent so much original material to just just go make your own original film. Don't call it the Screw Tape Letters. So that's a, a, a classic case of forcing it. Why do we have to make the Screw Tape Letters into a movie? So I guess overall, I'm feeling a little bit better about all this. Uh, the idea of making independently opens up a lot of concerns and potential problems, but it also opens up a lot of possibilities. Um. So uh, a lot of interesting things we hadn't really seriously considered before uh, to ponder uh, for the next uh, several years, apparently. In the meantime, I'm just glad that I've still got those books on my shelves, uh, several copies, in fact, and that, uh, well, they've uh, changed the number on the spine uh, to the, the order you should read from the way they were originally published. Um, the text itself remains unchanged, and that's uh, the that's one of the things I'm going to be discussing in great length in the video I'm working on right now, which is a three-part video about chronological order versus publication order. This is a video that I made way back before the Prince Caspi movie came out. And uh, it was a 10-minute video. I was reasonably happy with it. But ever since then, it's just always been in the back of my mind, oh, I'd love to really make a, a video that really explores every nook and cranny and just uh, looks at all the, all the parts of the issue. And here's why chronological order sucks and why the Order Lewis originally published them in um, is a lot better. So that's what I'm working on right now. And, uh, but it's, it's nice to have some Narnie movie news to speculate about and to discuss.